Welcome back to Racing Across America. Always happy to be joined by Ron Nicoletti from Gulfstream Park. Good morning, Ron. Good morning. How are you guys? Very good. Should remind people, I always like to uh, uh, give the little tout that uh, we have you on the program. We love to hear your comments on Thursdays for Thursday racing, weekend stakes. We'll do that today. But they can always find your selections on the Gulfstream Park website. Nice printable sheet. I printed it up today, in fact. Nice PDF that... Uh, offers comments and selections each and every racing day. What you, it seems like you're usually a couple of days ahead, too. Yeah, we work uh, like uh, Saturdays was due this morning. So we're always two days ahead of time. You know, we have to get it done. So, uh, you know, you just hope that it doesn't rain or they come off the turf. Otherwise, you have to do everything over again. Yeah, and everybody understands it. Certainly, I do. I, I do, don't, I've done the public handicapping myself. And right. Everybody kind of understands that that's part of the, the public handicapper's uh, dilemma. But we, right. we do the best we can, and you do a great job. Yeah. Uh, besides that, of course, for folks watching the simulcast signal all day long, you're on before the races, and that's a lot of fun, too. Uh, Ron, uh, you and I were talking during the break for folks who are playing this afternoon. Uh, I related to you with a story uh, from Andrew Dembski uh, yesterday talking about there in the 50s. I uh, just talked to Brian Spencer over at the fairgrounds. Uh, they're cool. You know, compared to us, uh, you guys are doing okay, but it's cool for them, uh, unseasonably cool, and I guess you're experiencing some of the similar conditions uh, down there. Give us an update on today, but also what's it look like for the weekend? Well, it's going to be beautiful for the weekend. Today Perfect. it's about 58 degrees right now, and uh, you know normally it, it warms up by this time of day. We get some cold mornings, but uh, not supposed to warm up until uh, I believe Thursday or fri uh, Friday, or you know, and then Saturday is supposed to be in the 70s again, low 70s. But uh, you know, as long as there's sunshine out, uh, you can't beat it. Yeah, yeah, no question about it. As they say, cool for you guys, understandably so. But uh, sounds good to us up here at this point because we're ready for winter to end. All right, let's take a look at some of the action for this afternoon before we get into a really great stakes card on Saturday. But uh, today at Gulfstream, the fourth race, Florida Bread Maiden Specials. These are three-year-olds going seven. What were your thoughts in the fourth? I went with the four royal uh, squeeze. This one beating the nose at a mi and the mile in the 16th in reality division of the Florida size stakes. Then comes back and presses the pace and finishes sixth. That was in the OBS uh, championship last time out. That's up in Ocala. Turning back to a sprint distance for the first time. And just uh, here's the key. Chad Brown, 56% with the turn back move. Javier Castellano, uh, I was shocked to see this horse 3-1 to one on the morning line. I would have made it much lower. So Royal Squeeze, uh, you know, it's not in the Rainbow Six sequence, but I just think if you're getting the early pick four, this might be a horse that you might want to, you know, jump on and single in there. And I used the Bounding Legacy in second, Express Jet in third. So four, six, and two in there. Yeah, and I love the cutback angle to begin with. When you can combine that with a trainer with those kind of stats, you're kind of hitting a home run. Exactly. All right, let's go out to uh, race number seven this afternoon. We're on the turf at five. Conditional claimer, 20 tags, non-winners of three lifetime. Your thoughts on the seven? I went with the four probably. Not going to be much of a price, but this is in the Rainbow Six sequence. Not the, it's actually the horse uh, I'm going to single on my ticket. we got like a little over $92,000 in the pool. Uh, I think this one uh, looks strong after returning from the layoff for Mike Maker. Just getting nipped at the wire at this level and distance. Uh, you know, Mike Mackey's really good second off the bench. I just thought that was a logical choice. And I used the seven PJs in Enigma in second. And then a horse going to the turf. I didn't know what to make with him, but I put him on there because it's Pleaser and Paco, and that's the eight artsy. But I, I really like the four probably in that spot. Castellano on again, and, of course, he had the big uh, day with the 4,000 uh, win total being hit. Yep. Uh, and we'll go out now to, uh, let me just scroll down here, race number... 10 this afternoon and oops, I went by there, there we go race number 10 optional claimer starter allowance they're both at the $35,000 level mile and a 16th on the turf your thoughts on the 10th well what happens is that went back there was a four horse blanket finish in this race and the horse that won it was uh, uh, you know the smartest of folks trying to make it two in a row that's the seven but I went back and looked at the race and I thought the four seventh fleet humor uh, stretching out today to the mile and a 16th he was the one that was four wide he finished fourth he was only beaten three quarters of a length in the race against, uh, as I mentioned, against the same horses that he's going to face today, and that's the seven smart as a ho as smart as a fox and the number eight, uh, Mr. Magician. I just thought he he had the worst of it, even though he got beat three parts of a length. So I mean, you sort of got to use the other horses in there, but uh, I just think that the four seventh fleet humor is the one that to come back and, and beat the horses that beat him last time out. Sounds good. All right, there are some ideas for today. Now let's jump in and take a look at some of the uh, stakes on Saturday, and we'll kind of go with the highlight and work our ways 
back a little bit, although there are a lot of highlights on Saturday. But, of course, uh, towards the end of the day will be the uh, Fountain of Youth for three-year-olds. Grade 2 event, $400,000, mile and a 16th. And, uh, Ron, while we talk, going to go back and look at the Holy Bull because we have the uh, uh, top uh, three, top uh, two coming, top three coming back in here. Uh, number eight, Upstart, will win the Holy Bull. Uh, number one, Frosted, runs second. Number four, Bluegrass Singer, runs third. An impressive three-year-old debut for Upstart. And again, in the video replay, that'll be the number eight. We also have Gorgeous Bird in here for our friend up the road, Mary Lou Whitney, who uh, only three career starts, but uh, last couple have been nice wins. Uh, it's a knockout from Pletcher is one I'm a little bit interested in. I got a little future pool work on that one. <laughs> Frosted uh, also in here. That, that one, uh, as I say, second in the... Uh, uh, holy bull that we're looking at right there but of course it's kieran mclaughlin and godolphin always have to pay attention to them but can you get past past upstart in here off of that nice win i, I don't think so you know i wanted to try and beat the horse today but he really stamped himself as the one to beat you know winning that as you mentioned the holy bull and he won it very impressively he didn't look like you know he was going to get it done and all of a sudden he just exploded and he drew off to win it by five plus lengths uh, you know jose Ortiz will be atop him. He's a New York red son of Flatter, and he just was very impressive. You know, I threw the four gorgeous bird in second. I uh, lived up to his name. He was really impressive winning his uh, sophomore debut. He won that by uh, over seven lengths, or seven lengths in that race. He's an umbrella song. What I liked about him, he's worked good up at Palm Meadows. I've been hearing good things about him. His last work, a bullet, 59 and three. And of course, you know, number six Forrester was favored over Upstart in the Holy Bowl, yeah. hoping to turn the tables today. Uh, you know, we had a little bumping incident at the start, finished second. It, you mentioned the connections, training sharply for the rematch, but boy, they're going to have to go some to beat Upstart. I, went, I did not pick him on top last time out, and boy, he convinced me that he might be the one to beat, especially at this mile 16 distance. Yeah. yeah, and it's going to be fun to see, you know, over the past couple of weeks, been keeping track of the pundits, and after the race out in Southern California, the various Derby Dozens and Derby Tens, Dortmund's on top of a lot of those, but I have to think things might switch up if Upstart wins on Saturday. Yeah, you would think so. I was watching, actually watching one of those shows yesterday, and one of the people didn't even have Upstart in the oh. in their top five, and I'm going like, what, what do you mean? <laughs> uh, you know, you got to at least have them, you know, early on in the top five, you know? Yeah, particularly off of that first race of the uh, three-year-old season. All right, let's uh, move backwards, and uh, don't have any video here to look at, but I wanted to get uh, your thoughts on the Canadian turf uh, because, man, this is a fun Big field, wide open, grade three event, a mile on the turf. X Caper uh, always seems to toss in a pretty good effort. Uh, Jack Milton for Todd Pletcher. Uh, again, a horse that on a best effort I think could get up there and kind of be in the mix. Silver Freak has a lot of early speed. Sky Blazer for Barkley Tag comes off of a win. Uh, Mooton for uh, uh, Shadwell and Kieran McLaughlin. One in the... Uh, first start in the United States, and then tossed in a dud last time in the Fort Lauderdale, but there was some trouble there. Long on value, uh, goes out for Billy Mott. Uh, ring weekend from, for our buddies at uh, uh, West Point. Uh, again, one of those horses on a best effort can be right there. And Adirondack King, I, don't, I couldn't quite figure out why the horse was in the race. It's like no real turf form, but uh, you know, those kind, I think you always have to pay attention a little bit. What did you think in the Canadian Well, turf? all I did was I was listening to you, and you named everybody a horse that I wanted to put on top, but <laughs> I couldn't. There's oodles of speed yeah. in this race. There's just tons of speed. So I, I actually went with the six Jack Milton, who runs well fresh, makes his first start. He really fire in that grade by one by mile on September 4th. But if you look back, Always runs, runs well for us. He's a son of war run. He's training beautifully, and he does his best running from off the pace. And I think he's going to sit the trip behind there. You know, the trip is the key with these type of races. And how about the two Grant Tito? He's turned it back to a mile today. He got beat one and a half lengths by the horse. I think it's going to be real special. That was Mishawish, Mishawish in the nine furlong grade one Gulfstream Park turf. And a neck by the same horse in the mile in the 16th grade two Fort Lauderdale. Uh, Jose Ortiz gets the mount, uh, and you talked about XK, but that's the inside gas. Jose Lescano, one of the best at nursing them along on the front uh, front end. So an uh, absolutely impossible race yeah. <laughs> to figure out, but I did go with six. Uh, that is Jack Milton, two, Grant Tito, and the one x -caper. I'm with you, and as I say, we didn't have any video replay there because I didn't quite know which way to go. <laughs> it was, it, uh, that's a fun race that I yeah. think is going to, has the potential to upset some rainbow six tickets uh, on Saturday. All right, now I do have some video here because, again, I said, 
This is a card that is a lot of fun with a lot of highlights, and one of the highlights will be in the MACD Armida, uh, the ninth race on the card on Saturday. A couple hundred thousand dollars, great two event, but why is this one of the highlights? The return of main sequence. Clips Award winner, Breeders' Cup Turf winner, uh, but not only main sequence, but what, uh, and it really wasn't until I kind of took a look at these past performances that I realized main sequence and, and a real rival here, a rivalry, 20 Eclipse, who has finished behind main sequence in his past four starts, three of those second place finishes. Again, our friends at West Point, I've said for a long time, I think there's a grade one waiting to be added to Twilight Eclipse's resume as he's just missed it in nail biting fashion a couple of times over the past couple of seasons. But I'm not sure that he's going to get past uh, main sequence again today. We'll see it again as he picks through the season. If he can find a grade one someplace out there, uh, I just think he has it. But it, this is, again, a grade two event to kind of kick the season off for uh, these two. Should be a lot of fun. Uh, Arctic North, this one was kind of interesting to me because the uh, Mac Diarmida, mile and three-eighths. Arctic North, the cutback angle. Ran in the Allen Jerkins last <laughs> time at two miles. Divine Oath goes out for Todd Fletcher. As we talk here, going to pull up the uh, video of the Breeders' Cup turf. Number 12 main sequence will win. Who subsequently went, went over to Hong Kong and won. But running third, again, the very game, number two, Twilight Eclipse. They're back on Saturday, main sequence in Twilight Eclipse. Uh, do you get past those two? Uh, you know, I have that main, main sequence on top, but just a little, because Twilight Eclipse, besides, you know, that the good rivalry we have, this is the defending champ in the McDometer. So this one is coming back as, uh, you know, loves this course, three starts, two wins. As I mentioned, the... Uh, uh, defending champ. Maybe he can finally get the job done at this 11 furlong distance in here. And, you know, threw in a divine oath, as you mentioned, from this horse, a perfect 3-for-3 three three on the Gulfstream turf. It includes a score in the 12 furlong McKnight. Uh, parlay maybe his affinity for this surface into uh, would be a definite upset in here. But, boy, the connection certainly can pull that off. But the uh, main sequence, of course, is going to be odds on to win this one. Uh, I mean, I, I'm going to throw Twilight Eclipse somewhere on my ticket. And as you mentioned that, you know, the defending champ, didn't he have a, uh, like a world record at a mile and a half in a race a couple seasons yeah, ago? Yeah, I believe so. Yeah, I think he did. I, I vaguely remember that. I know it was a West Point runner, and I think right. it was Twilight Eclipse. Right. And then right. it was subsequently beaten the next day out in Southern California. So it was a fluky thing. That's why I remember it. All right, let's go a little bit earlier and uh, finally take a look. The three-year-old girls in the... Uh, Devona Dale, grade two event. They're going to go the one turn mile for a couple of hundred thousand dollars. While we uh, talk, we'll take a look back at the forward gal on January 24th. Uh, number four, Bird at the Wire will win. Number eight, Last of the Mohicans, second. They're both uh, back. Eskin for Money comes in off a couple of uh, wins most recently for uh, Todd Fletcher. Jack Aranda, two for two uh, so far in the career. So uh, a little light on experience, but certainly showing some talent. Enchantress could be the other Pletcher in here. Those are always intriguing. And McLaughlin and Stone Street bring in Cavorting. Your thoughts on the Devona Dale? I went with the six. You didn't mention Puka. This one is coming yeah, back to yeah. mile after ending a freshman campaign. You know, she had trouble in the, in the British Cup Juvenile Philly. She broke glass. She was last all the way around. Then she's turned it for home. She's stuck behind a wall of horses at the quarter pole. She's blocked in the stretch. She's beaten only three lengths by the Eclipse one to take charge Brandy. A daughter of Big Brown. Training beautifully at Payson Park. Lots of speed in here. I think this one might be just a little overlooked, so I put Puka on top. Eskin for money. I've been very impressed with that horse, and you mentioned Bird at the wire. So going to go a little different way there with the number six Puka. I, I, to tell you the truth, I like that call. I, and I have to admit, I looked at the horse uh, last night and was kind of, eh, I wasn't quite sure. <laughs> but I like the horse going into the Breeders' Cup race and subsequently you know, that, that coming out of a maiden special, that was a tough assignment. Yeah, she but, was one two that day. Yeah, could it could um, could come back with a little added maturity off the two year old to three year old layoff. And I just think the three year old Phillies haven't defined themselves at this point. So it wouldn't shock me to see a horse like this uh, get up and get it done. I kinda think that's a good call. So I may be using a little pook on Saturday as well. <laughs> All right, Rod, as always we appreciate the visit. Good luck this afternoon and of course on Saturday. Good luck to you and everybody down at Golfstream. I'm putting together a big card. We'll talk to you next week.